Hello, uh, good morning everyone. Thanks for attending the session. Uh, my name is Mohak Chadda. Uh, today I'll be talking about MPI Wasm uh, executing WebAssembly on HPC systems. I'm uh, finally a PhD candidate at QM, mostly working in distributed systems and uh, cloud computing. All right, so uh, let's begin. Today's presentation is structured as follows. First, I will talk about the main motivation behind the work, followed by a brief introduction about what WebAssembly is and MPI. What we did in this work, some results on a production HPC system and how WebAssembly can be utilized uh, in the HPC ecosystem in future. So uh, there recently there has been an influx of HPC focused containerization solutions uh, such as Charlie Cloud, Shifter, Singularity, uh, Podman, uh, Ceres, and Docker, uh, which is not entirely suited for HPC environments, but in some ways is part of the ecosystem. Uh, especially for building OCI compliant container images, right? So why do containers actually make sense for HPC? So containers allow developers to define uh, custom software stacks for their scientific applications and not only rely on specific modules uh, which are present on modern HPC systems. So uh, despite the increasing popularity, uh, the adoption uses of containers in HPC systems is still significantly limited. So if you look at the workload data uh, from NERSC, only 8% of the total jobs actually use containers. So there are several challenges, uh, uh, such as uh, one of the biggest challenges that most containerization solutions require root privileges for execution, uh, which is not possible in HPC systems due to uh, shared file systems. Uh, there are alternatives such as Podman uh, or Singularity, which uh, support rootless containers, but they don't support uh, parallel file systems, which are found commonly on HPC systems. Uh, HPC systems nodes are becoming more heterogeneous with different processor architectures. So building Arch64 container images from generic x86-64 resources is significantly time consuming. Uh, most applications require special networking libraries or compilers which are only possible or found on HPC systems. And uh, building high performance scientific application container images uh, is actually significantly uh, non-trivial. So what if there was an alternative that could address all these problems? So I'm sure most of you are aware of this tweet from Solomon Ikes, who was the uh, founder and former CTO of Docker, who says that if WebAssembly had existed in 2008, when Docker was created, there would have been no need for Docker. So what is WebAssembly? Uh, it originated as an alternative to JavaScript and web browsers. It's essentially a universal intermediate binary instruction format. Uh, it has a set of instructions uh, that are defined in the Watson specification and it's meant for sandbox execution in a virtual machine. It has a 32-bit linear memory address space, uh, so maximum memory possible for an application. It's 4 gigabytes currently. And unlike containers, uh, WebAssembly provides lightweight uh, isolation at the application level based on uh, software fault isolation and control flow integrity. So everything is unprivileged and in user space. Uh, and it has like this capability-based model which you can grant capability so binary what it can do or has access to. Right, so uh, what is MPI? Uh, just in short, it's just a de facto standard for programming HPC systems and is used in all modern supercomputers uh, today. Uh, more information can be found there. Right, so what we did, uh, we used, uh, proposed using WebAssembly as a distribution format for packaging MPI-based HPC applications. So the main idea is that you can compile any scientific HPC application to WebAssembly once, and then we can execute that on any uh, platform by supporting WebAssembly Embedder. So we implemented the tool to simplify this compilation process and also an embedder which, could ex which can execute uh, MPI-based WASM modules uh, with great performance. So uh, for compiling uh, normal application, MPI application to WebAssembly, we currently support C, C++. Uh, we implemented a custom header file uh, that provides definitions for different MPI data types and added that to the WebAssembly system SDK, right? Uh, which you know combines the client compiler uh, and the WASI libc library for compiling C, post six based C, C++ applications uh, to WebAssembly. So uh, second to automate this process, we also implemented a custom Python-based tool. Uh, this again is the WebAssembly text representation on the right-hand side. And you see here that everything is an integer. Uh, this is because we abstract uh, all data types as integers from the perspective of the WebAssembly module, uh, which are translated to uh, native types at runtime by MPI WASM. So as a result, all WASM modules uh, for MPI applications are portable across uh, different MPI libraries. So what is MPI WASM? It is just a 
WebAssembly embedder built on Wasmo, which is another popular WebAssembly embedder. Uh, we can currently support the execution of C++, C++ application conforming to the MPI 2.2 standard, uh, support different process architectures, and to facilitate its adoption, uh, it, MPI Wasm enables high performance execution of MPI-based Wasm modules, has low overhead for MPI calls through zero copy memory operations. This is be automatically accomplished by translating from the linear memory address space of the Wasm module to the host memory address space. And we offer immediate support for high-performance network interconnects, uh, such as Intel, Omnipath, or InfiniBand, which are found on uh, HPC system by directly linking against the type target library. So uh, for uh, compiling Wasm code to native machine code, we use uh, ahead-of-time compilation strategies. Uh, first, uh, uh, for this, we use the LLVM compiler infrastructure. Uh, where the Wasm instructions are first translated to LNBM IR and then uh, to the native instructions. Uh, and to offset larger compilation times, we also implemented a caching mechanism in MPI Wasm, uh, which prevents recompilation overhead before uh, each execution. So how does memory address translation work, which is one of the core contributions? So imagine you have an MPI application. The MPI API is based on the library being able to read and write directly to the memory of the application. However, the executing Wasm module can only provide memory addresses uh, in its own linear memory address space, while the target MPI library uh, is, requires addresses in the host memory address space. So when you execute an MPI module in MPI Wasm, it reserves a part of its own memory address space uh, for use by the Wasm module. Uh, in addition, uh, it records the base address uh, of the Wasm module. Using this, it is possible to directly convert, convert 32-bit uh, pointers that refer to the module's address space to 64-bit pointers uh, that refer to the MPI Wasm's address space and vice versa. So this represents a structure uh, in Wasm which actually allows you to do this. Uh, and for implementing different MPI functions, uh, we combine memory address translation and data type translation. And for uh, directly utilizing the host MPI library, uh, we use the project RSMPI which provides MPI bindings for Rust. Uh, so when a Wasm module calls a particular MPI function with a specific linear memory address, uh, this address is translated to a 64-bit address uh, expected by the host MPI library, and after successful uh, invocation of that MPI function, the status pointer is again translated back to 32-bit uh, referring to the Wasm module's linear address space. Right, so uh, we tested our system, our implementation on a production HPC system uh, based on Intel processors. Uh, so we scaled the application up to 128 nodes, uh, which is around 6,144 uh, MPI processors. And also on uh, ARM-based systems, uh, uh, such as the AWS Graviton 2 processor, and we experimented on different standardized HPC benchmarks, which are used in the community, right? So if you look at, uh, some performance results, right? Uh, ping pong is a common uh, communication uh, routine. Uh, so error graphs in the bars represent minimum and maximum values for iteration timings. And uh, so for ping pong, we actually observe around 0 0.05 geometric mean average slowdown, uh, while for send receive, uh, we observed uh, a 0 0.06 uh, geometric mean average slowdown across all message sizes. Right, so HPCG is a, a common uh, benchmark. Uh, so uh, if you look at up to 192 MPI processes, we observe really similar performance as compared to native execution. Uh, but when we scale to 128 nodes, uh, we actually observe uh, around 14% uh, overhead. Uh, this is basically because of how HPCG does uh, like a lot of uh, communication and uh, the translation overhead actually adds up. So this is the maximum overhead we actually observe for any application uh, in our experiments. So the WebAssembly Web community is uh, thriving, and they have a lot of proposals which uh, target extending the uh, Wasm specification. So I just want to highlight one of them, which is the uh, extended uh, SIMD uh, specification. So currently, WebAssembly only supports 128-bit SIMD, uh, but uh, in the future, there are proposals to support uh, flexible vector lens, and in, if you look at modern processors, right, they are 512-bit. So just to show, this is the data traffic benchmark from uh, NAS parallel benchmark suit. So if you see, uh, when you enable SIMD, 128-bits, uh, uh, you get a 1.36x better throughput, right? But native is definitely better because you have 512-bit on uh, Intel processors due to AVX512, right? 
So uh, more details about this can be found in our PPOP paper, which was published this year. Uh, right, uh, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, let, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Yes? Sorry? So, uh, so this uh, embedder is completely implemented in Rust uh, because uh, we, uh, it has really good support for using Rustmer and for WebAssembly. So we use Rust for everything. So, what about Python? Python is just for a tool for uh, uh, making the compilation process to WebAssembly easier. It's just a custom tool which can be installed on the system to simplify the compilation process so you don't need to worry about installing the right RAS SDK and everything like that. So basically to simplify dependencies and compiling the applications to RAS. So the actual embedder is completely independent and it's uh, implemented in RAS. All right, so I'm out of time. Thank you.